in our churches and those short-term teams or field workers who, who go overseas and they feel maybe that they don't have enough ways to communicate with nationals. Um, they don't know if they're going to India, they might not know Urdu or Hindi. And so they go and they do their physical construction work or VBS or, or whatever. And But with the mobile device being so ubiquitous and all of these wonderful apps from uh, Crew, the Jesus Film um, Media Project, and then there's uh, Faith Comes by Hearing. They have a, a wonderful app called Bible.is, and, and Global Recordings Network has an app. All of these wonderful tools are available to all of us and sometimes people just don't know about them so we would love to inform and the way we are informing is is through a book and we want to make it useful like a hands-on guide but we also sat down and said how about if we do it in a story format so on the cover you'll see on this cover is is one of the characters named Ravi and Ravi is Indian he shows um, his friends, and uh, Clyde, if you can scroll on down to, let's say, page six. And you can use the thumbnails on the side. I'm going to give you a link to this document in a minute. <clears throat> so there's his, his two friends, Jose and Sarah, and and actually they go through the steps to to use their mobile phone for ministry when they go on a trip to India. And Ravi helps them through that process. So at, at the end of each chapter, and so here's chapter one, and if you scroll down a little bit for me, Clyde, we'll go to page uh, three, Four. I think. All right. Page three? Yeah, let's go to page three, or in the, in the book, sorry. I see, sorry. I'm sorry, so... In the book, okay, so I don't know what, keep, yeah, sorry. Keep I'm going, going, keep going, to that blue box that we were. All right, 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 right. Yeah. I've got to just navigate the screen here. There we go. Okay, so uh, in in the several places in this booklet um, are little blue call-out boxes. And so in this particular one, we want to see Digging Deeper 1.1 on page 4. If you click on the number 4, then it actually hyperlinks you to that page in that digging deeper section. And also in these sections, the digging deeper is referenced in the story on page three. So if Clyde clicks on that page three, he can navigate back to the story page. So all of these in the PDF file are hyperlinked uh, throughout the, the story. And of course, the table of contents um, if you go ahead on the navigation bar, Clyde, to scroll up to the table of contents. Oops. A little bit further down. One more. There you go. So in case you um, need to see uh, how to download the Jesus Film Media app directly to your phone, you can just thumb through to the contents and navigate quickly there. Um, 13, page 13. So it, it, it just allows you some um, flexibility and finding things quickly as well as just, um, like I said, for the field workers or short-term teams, just giving them some more uh, mobile phone literacy for using their phone for God's glory, which is why we entitled it Your Phone, God's Glory, a hands-on guide. And we want to be able to uh, launch this today. We, we have it in a PDF format <clears throat> and a Mobi format and an EPUB format that we'll provide links to you later on. Um, right now, I'm just going to put the in the chat box the, the bit.ly link that will directly uh, send you to the PDF file, which you can save to your computer and, um, and be able to share it. Um, have, have some personal conversations with your missions committees at your churches pastors, anybody that you feel would be, um, can, can help mobilize people in using phones overseas to um, evangelize, provide discipleship, get resources that are um, con contextual for them in their own language. Um, I'd be happy to enter, oh, 
one more thing, Clyde, if you would go back up to the um, top of the document, page two or three, I think, just to, to give a shout out to the, um, the team here. All of these organizations contributed to the development of the curriculum. So we have Bible Transmission, Cyber Missions, Frontiers, Renew, Visual Story Network, WEC, and, uh, and WBT. So if there's any questions, I'd be happy to entertain them. Or um, we can I've on. got one. I'll jump in, Darcy. And I'm, unfortunately, I'll mention for, uh, for everybody else, just for the sake of audio, I've muted you. And I think most of you are using your computer. You should be on the participant box able to scroll over the red um, mute button and then unmute yourself if you have a question. So Darcy, what, do you, what is the best way for people to process or even transmit this content? I mean, obviously, re it's, it's, it's a great read if you sit down and read it. If you were to teach it, like, just how, what's the best way to kind of go through this in your opinion? Um, it's got some flexibility. I, I, I personally, um, for, for people who are already kind of technically savvy with their phones, just read the story. Skip the tutorials and, and, um, and just read the story through, and that will help you um, kind of build a vision. Um, and then to, to work with other people who are not so um, kind of thinking about technology or mobile phones for ministry, help them through a couple tutorials. Um, show them how easy it is to get an app on their phone and in another language so that they can think uh, outside the box, per se. Okay. No, that, that's awesome. No, I love the visuals. So, yeah, so those little, these visuals are, are pretty helpful. I'm trying to, I know that like this one, this little tutorial, it kind of, it's a, it's a, it shows you kind of, I guess, everything you need to know to, to use your phone to download content thing, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Very cool. Um, I'm just curious because I know Keith and, and Brian and others were involved with this. Keith or Brian, do you guys want to add anything um, just in terms of use, usability and what we've got here? Keith, I'll put yeah, on you first. Yeah, we'd, we'd love to see this being used at churches. Um, one of the things that you're going to, Lord willing, be seeing in the next six months uh, is a series of videos, six videos that will uh, act out the story so that, uh, you know, as you're training others, you can play a, a three or four minute video and then walk through with them uh, the steps in, in how to actually do the, the mobile ministry skills that were shown on the video. Nice. Anybody else? Well, we'll go over to you, Benjamin. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Darcy. That is awesome. I, I have not actually, this is one of those projects I didn't, haven't seen any of it and been a part of any of the process of it, and it's really cool to see the finished product. They did a good job. And correct me if I'm wrong, but Clyde was, uh, or Darcy, was, um, Josiah is the one who did all that artwork, isn't he? Yay, Josiah. Josiah yeah. just joined us. Actually, Josiah's in the process of joining us, yes. Okay. Yeah, he did a great job. And these characters you'll see in the videos that uh, Keith mentioned earlier. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. It turned out really, really well. Yeah. And you said it was about 70 pages-ish or in, so? In the PDF file, yes. And okay. then in the Mobi and EPUB format, um, it'll be a lot shorter, and then you could use your Kindle or your Nook or your e-reader, however you want to read it on, on screen. Very good. And are we doing an app as well? I mean, come on, we need an app. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's, that's a lot of work, and it's still much more to come, so that's great. All right. I think more, I'm sorry, Benjamin. This is Clyde. So, Darcy, what, how, I mean, how do I get this onto my Kindle? I, I, I'm just not, I'm, I'm just really not that good at How do I get it on? Yeah, when we when we uh, post the uh, Mobi format, um, that would you just would uh, get that onto your device and open it up with Kindle, Kindle your Kindle app, or you can drag and drop onto your physical Kindle. It depends. I see. So Mobi is for Kindle, and then uh... and then the EPUB would be for EPUB readers that are on Android devices. Okay. Very cool. And I was able to open it on my iPhone with uh, iBooks as well. Uh, very nice. 
Yeah. Awesome. And okay, and I think we said this, but where do we get it? Uh, it will be posted to the Mobile Ministry Forum, um, hopefully later today. But I did put it in the chat box. And Jay just put it in the chat box. He put a. a here, I'll just go there really quick. Okay, good. Um, this is the. Um, yeah, the new. Well, post. we will have it on the blog too, won't we? Yeah, we'll have it here there. It yeah, the follow-up stuff as well. Great. Awesome. Okay, well, I think the next person on the list is Brian. Um, Actually, we switched to Keith. We did switch to Keith. All right, so Keith will be talking to us about offline media distribution. Um, and that was a review, correct, Keith? Yeah, comparative review of uh, three devices. And we kind of felt like we had to also include the, the light stream in with it. It's a little bit of an apple and orange uh, deal, adding the light stream, but uh, I think it's beneficial. So Clyde, if you can uh, start at the top maybe, I think there's, yeah, so just, if you go down one, you can see the, the four different devices that we're looking at. And uh, yeah, just keep going then. So, the idea with these devices is that you can create a kind of a hotspot that anybody with Wi-Fi on, whether it's their phone, their tablet, their computer, if they're in range, if they're looking for a network connection, they're going to have something pop up saying that there is internet available if they connect with this, uh, this site. And uh, what it's doing, it's not connecting them to the internet per se, it's connecting them to your local router, your server, and then you can decide what files and what media they can get access to uh, as they're connected to that. So you want to continue on there? Uh, so if you want to think of some different use cases, uh, say you're out in a rural area that has either very poor internet access or you're in a country or a setting where uh, getting on the internet, either with your computer or with perhaps only uh, in situations when you're trying to get on with your phone, it can be very costly. Uh, you are going to be able to provide people the way to get their files, their media, without having to do it over the internet. Uh, perhaps there are situations where the internet is being monitored by the security service, and again, uh, they can get on without having that, uh, the fact that they're getting these files seen by anybody I mean, there's a potential within that couple hundred feet that are within range, <clears throat> but it's not being monitored by anybody beyond that. Um, and then finally, we see a lot of people are using these kind of devices when there's a conference and you, you have some handouts or some media that you want everybody in the conference to be able to have access to. So you can have one of these devices there. Uh, typically, they're not going to allow for more than six different devices to be able to access it at the same time. But uh, with a device like the Lightstream, that is potentially as many as 30 different devices can be accessing the media uh, from the device at the same time. We can continue on. So the first device that we looked at and said, wow, this, this really seems like it has a lot of potential is this really long name, Hutu Tripmate Wireless and Portable Travel Router. Uh, it's great because it's inexpensive. It really fits in your pocket nicely. And the fact that it's got that 6,000 milliampere battery uh, means that you can charge your phone two or three times with it. You could go out for a weekend and you could just have that and your phone with you and you'd be able to broadcast your media. Uh, you'd be able to recharge your phone. Uh, it'd be handy in that way. So we can go on to the cons though. Uh, the deal breaker in this is that you actually, the, the person who's accessing it needs to be able to have the Hutu app. And so suddenly the person would need to get online, would need to go to the app store, download the app, and then finally be able to get onto your offline system. That really is not at all helpful. Uh, an even bigger issue really is the fact that there's only one username and password and they need to know it. And so once they access, they need to, to both know that. And then as well, if they have that, they can change all the files around on the device uh, to their liking. So 
all in all, if we go on to the next slide, it's not recommended as a offline media distribution device, but if it's, uh, it's quite helpful for you personally because you don't need to clog up your phone's memory with all those files. You actually are keeping your phone more secure if your phone ever got confiscated or left somewhere. It wouldn't have incriminating Christian media files on it uh, if you were just broadcasting everything off of playing it off of the uh, Hutu. And then the fact that it's got that external battery charger as well. For $40, it's, it's actually a fair value, just not good for offline mobile media distribution. So we'll go into the next one. Uh, this is what they call the pirate box. And um, yeah, it's there's different ways to build it, but the, the fact is that you have to build it. There's instructions online. You can't just buy it. Uh, it's got great range, 258 feet. Um, you can modify what the person sees when they first access. When they go online, they try to do an HTTP whatever, and uh, it gets sent to your landing page. You can modify that slightly, but not greatly. Um, and then there's a, a large community of, of hackers and, and things like that that are uh, putting out mods and, and ways of using it and stuff like that. So uh, a lot of creative thoughts going on out there about how to use this. We move forward. Uh, so the setup, the uh, I did not do this review myself. It was a coworker of mine who is actually an ethnomusicologist. So while he may be somewhat technically savvy, he's not a tech geek, coder, or anything like that. So for him, uh, these instructions, they were kind of challenging. And um, as well, the, the router that we use, there's a couple different routers that you can use. The router that we use for this one, uh, it requires an external, an extra battery. So then you have issues where the two get unplugged, uh, it's just more bulky, you forget one part that you need, needed. Um, so not the best in that way, at least that particular router. And then as well, uh, it's set up as an open source project by open community, and therefore it's meant to just be open for people to upload and download files onto it as they like. So you actually have to do a bit of modding work to secure it so other people can't play around with the files. That said, you can do that modification. So if we forward it, yeah, it's okay. If you use the other router that we used uh, for the Bible box, which is up next, it could be decent. But uh, I think the Bible box is your better bet. So let's go on to that. So uh, it's the most inexpensive offline uh, mobile media distribution device tested. It's a total of $45. If you look at the, the right of the picture of the Bible box, you see a little tiny black knob sticking out. That is a SanDisk Cruiser Fit uh, little thumb drive. And that's the kind of drive that we would recommend in using for one of these devices because it's, you know, using a, a, a normal one that's really long, it's going to be a lot more problematic to have that in your pocket or something like that. But uh, this works well. Uh, it's fairly pocketable. And uh, yeah, good range still. And the fact that you can buy it uh, from the maker, there's a guy named Campbell Smythe. Uh, he had been with MAF Learning Technologies. He's now uh, left them and he's working full time, but he's willing to put this together for you if, if you don't either have the time or the technical expertise to do it by yourself. So 120 Australian dollars plus shipping. If we go on to the next one. So you can't customize the landing page. Uh, if we'll, we'll try to see if we can get some feedback from Campbell on that, but at this point, uh, it doesn't appear to be any way to, to customize and change what people see when they get on. And that, that pre-made version is kind of expensive. So if we go on, yeah, it's great. If you're, uh, if you're looking at something $150 or less, this is my recommendation to you. Uh, for a device to use as a offline media distribution tool. And then we'll just go to the orange of the Lightstream device. Uh, it can do everything all the others can, plus plus. 
you can totally customize the landing page. You can customize it and put uh, left to right script or right to left script uh, languages. It's got incredible range. Bluetooth broadcasting is interesting. All these other devices, they're pool devices. They have to sit there and wait for somebody to pull the media off of them. With Bluetooth broadcasting, you can push it out to them. Uh, it also has a micro SD card duplicator and it's ready to use right out of the box. Next page. And you too can have this for only $360. Uh, it's a little bit of money and that's without a battery. 540 with a, a very high end, very high quality battery. The box on the top is the, the light stream and the box that's right in the guy's hand, that's the actual battery. So it's, it's kind of bulky. And uh, while you could put it in a, a jacket pocket, perhaps, uh, this isn't pocketable for your jeans or anything like that. So if we go to the final slide here. Yeah, if you can afford it, that's definitely the, the top of the line way to do offline mobile ministry distribution. Um, it's got everything and it rocks. So that's all I had to share. Well, wonderful. Thank you very much, Keith, for doing all that research. Um, that, that slide presentation is, will also be available after on the, on the Mobile Ministry Forum website and blog. And do we, will we have, because I, I know you talked about having or connect, being able to connect with um, Campbell, do we have a way to communicate with him? Well, he has uh, the Bible box dot org okay. website and he is has a, you know you can comment and contact okay. with him there so that's in the chat and we will also include that in the in the blog post as well great all right so now i guess we're going to hand it over to brian brian yes i've handed you the control you just need to take it and share your screen and for everybody else, um, it's the screen, if you wanted to go full screen within the browser in which his presentation appears, there is a little uh, full screen button that you can use if you so desire. Okay. Am I on? Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> well, we're taking a quick look at a, a number of Android tablets here. Uh, and we'll explain why in just a second. But these are seven-inch Android tablets, and uh, I'm, because I've got a number of them to go through, I'm going to dive through here, and we can hopefully take a couple questions at the end if anyone has any. Uh, first of all, why tablets? Uh, there are a few reasons that stand out. First of all, they're increasingly affordable and available. I was just talking with a colleague who lives in central Turkey. Uh, in addition to seeing a lot of iPhones, uh, quite a few iPhones, even though he's in a more rural area of Turkey. He says frequently when he goes into homes, he's, he's seeing people with tablets in, at use in the homes. Uh, so tablets are, are out there now. They are, uh, because of they're more affordable uh, and they're more widely available, they are uh, receiving quite an audience. Secondly, they're increasingly the productivity tool of choice. I think uh, last year was when we saw uh, saw the shift uh, where tablets began to outsell computers. Uh, that's a pretty big shift taking place. Uh, mobility is, uh, I think, especially because of, of, of the, the smartphone boom, uh, we've really grown attached to being able to take our technology with us. And uh, because tablets are getting more and more capable, uh, in addition to being very portable, we're seeing them become the tool of choice. Uh, and they really are, they're just a great blend of portability and features. Computers obviously still have a much greater feature set. Uh, mobile phones obviously still, uh, still king when it comes to portability, but tablets really fit that, that sweet spot in there in terms of, of portability and features. So what can we do with tablets for ministry? Why would we even be talking about this? Uh, uh, most of it centers around around media. There's been a, a huge revolution in terms of media as a result of, of really smartphones and, and now tablets. Media playback is an obvious choice for, uh, for ministry with a tablet. 
being able to play a, a video clip or even a, a full-length movie is a very enjoyable and, uh, and, and great experience on a tablet. You've got a larger screen than you have on a mobile phone and very suitable for watching together with, uh, with someone that you might be sharing with or even a small group because you do have that larger screen. So it's very effective for sharing video and audio as well. If you've got audio stories, uh, or even if you want to uh, to share some scripture, show show someone, uh, hey, I've, it says right here in the in in God's word, and you're able to be able to pull up a Bible app, for example, and and share in again larger text that is more suitable for uh, for sharing with uh, within a group situation. Media creation is also a great option. You know, we're seeing. A huge shift now. Consumers are no longer just uh, consumers of media; they are also uh, they are also uh, media creators, content creators. And while we can do that on mobile phones, we do it every day with uh, with Instagram and and Vine and and uh, all of these wonderful tools we have on our phones now. You're still pretty limited in what you can accomplish on a small screen. Tablets give you quite a bit more real estate to work with. Uh, when you're editing media, whether it's video, uh, graphics, photos, or even audio. So uh, tablets are very capable media creation devices. And one of the things we really want to see with mobile ministry is more media creation being pushed out to the field, pushed out to the masses, where media can be created much more quickly and much more effectively, much more contextualized than it can be uh, in other ways. Uh, and, of course, media sharing. That's one of the key ways when we talk about mobile ministry, we want to see media getting shared, not just consumed in the, in the concept, context of a conversation, but being able to pass that media on from one person to another. Tablets make that very easy to do. Uh, you've got, you can store a, a huge amount of media on a tablet, and with that bigger screen, just navigating your way around uh, and, and finding that media that you want to share and then passing it along to someone is, is very easy. And social media, obviously. Tablets are wonderful, wonderful tools for social media. This is where people live now all across the globe, whether it's Facebook or, uh, or, or Twitter or Instagram or WhatsApp. All of these types of social media and messaging types of tools are, are just a great experience on tablets. And, of course, uh, finally, they are increasingly a great productivity tool as well. Uh, this is kind of more of on the support side of our uh, of, of ministry, but uh, but being able to do email, document creation, reading ebooks, etc. Tablets are wonderful for that as well. So why these tablets? I'll, I'll tell you in just a moment what tablets we chose. But why why did we choose these tablets? We had a few criteria. First of which was uh, Android. We wanted to limit it to Android. Android is the top mobile operating system in the world. In the second quarter of 2014, uh, Android owned 85% of the market share globally. That's pretty significant. And so that made it the obvious choice when uh, doing this tablet review. Uh, seven inch screen size, uh, that's really the sweet, the sweet spot between smartphones, which are around four to five inches on average for a screen size, and full-size tablets, which are generally around 10 inches, give or take an inch or so. Uh, seven inch is really the uh, kind of the sweet spot there. It's still highly portable, uh, just not quite as portable as a phone, but, but highly portable, much more so than, for example, a full-size iPad. Uh, third, a micro SD slot. Uh, this is something iPads don't have. Almost all Android tablets and Windows tablets have it. Again, we're focusing on Android. Uh, but this is a key feature. It allows us to not only have quite a bit of extra file storage, which allows us to carry with us a large amount of media, which can be well organized for easy and quick retrieval, but it also makes it very easy to, to share uh, that media as well. We can, we can take a, a micro SD card out of someone's phone, pop it into our tablet, copy files over onto that micro SD card, hand it back to them and they can pop it right into their phone. And they've got that media, very quick and easy. Uh, and then under $150, we wanted to look at the budget range of tablets, uh, those that would still be very, very affordable to the masses while still offering key tablet features that would be useful for mobile ministry. And as a kind of a final criteria, we weren't real strict on, but we wanted to look at those that were more uh, available globally. So the tablets we looked at, the Asus MimoPad 7, DataWind UbaSlate 7CI, uh, Hisense Zero 7 Pro, 
Lenovo A7 and the LG G Pad. I'm going to quickly run through, give you some of the pros and cons of each of these, and I'll give you my final thoughts. The Mimo Pad was, uh, you know, a, a good device. Uh, didn't stand out in any areas, but it was a good solid device. Uh, what it really disappointed was in the cameras. It, it does not have great cameras, which may or may not be an issue for some people, but certainly if you're going to be creating content, it's not, that's not a real plus. It was also at the high end of the spectrum. And the display, while good, was not as good as some of the other tablets. On the positive side, it did have great battery life and 16 gigabytes of internal storage. Only two of the tablets that we tested had 16 gigabytes. And so that was a plus for the Asus Mimo Pad. Uh, I'm going to skip through here a little bit more quickly. Uh, the DataWin Ubislate 7CI, this is kind of an interesting tablet. It, it, it came out in India. It's subsidized by the Indian government. It's uh, being pushed in schools. Uh, you can tell from the apps on there that it is oriented towards, uh, towards the education market. Uh, the really interesting thing about it is it is priced under $40. That's for a, for a full-featured tablet, which is pretty remarkable. In India, it's selling for around uh, $15 to $20. It's subsidized by the government. Uh, the biggest issues with the DataWind for, uh, for most audiences, no Google Play support, which really limits, uh, limits the, the apps that are available to most people. L very low internal storage, 4 gigabytes. About half of that is, is used by the operating system, so you really only have about 2 gigabytes of usable storage. Uh, very low battery life, about 2.5 hours in our video test. Uh, camera, display, build quality, no Bluetooth. So it, this is not you know, a high-end tablet, but you get what you pay for. And for under $50, this is a decent option for those in the developing world who aren't going to be able to afford something more expensive. It allows them to get in the game, as it were. And that's a, that's a pretty compelling reason to consider this, depending on where you live. Um, and uh, uh, one right, nice surprise on this and all of the other tablets, the internal mic coupled with a, a good audio recording app produced really excellent audio. Uh, which would make this a great tool for recording stories, podcasts, sermons, training, etc. So that was that was a really nice surprise that the that the mic on its own, built into the into this little cheap thirty seven dollar tablet, could produce such good audio. Okay, the High Sense. If you can find this, it's one big con is it's not widely available. High Sense is kind of an off brand, marketed through Walmart and some other channels here in the U S. But this is an amazing feature packed tablet comes with a mini, mini HDMI uh, port, which allows you to easily connect it to, uh, to an HDTV or, um, uh, or to a monitor, perhaps even a projector for, for a wider viewing audience. A very, very good battery life, best battery life uh, of all of the tablets tested. Great camera specs, again, the best of all of the tablets. Uh, its screen was also among the very best. Uh, so really a compelling tablet, and you can get this for $85. So really, really a, um, an amazing bargain there. It wasn't our overall top pick just because of its limited availability. It's a little bit larger and heavier than the other tablets, and I'm not quite sure how reliable and durable it's going to be. It's, it's a brand new uh, tablet. Hisense is not, is, hasn't been in the game for a while, and so it's a little bit of an unknown. Uh, the Lenovo A7 is, uh, was a really enjoyable tablet to use. 16 gigabytes of internal space, of storage, only one of two tablets that had that much space. Again, great cameras, front and rear cameras uh, that match the high sense that we just looked at. Great uh, availability across the globe with the Lenovo name. And perhaps the best overall display. Its only real con was that its battery life was, was mediocre. Uh, I would have loved to have seen it having better battery life. Um, another, another bonus for this and some of the other tablets, uh, with, with brand name tablets, you're more likely to see Android updates pushed out to it. This, this tablet was immediately updated from 4.2 to uh, Android version 4.4 KitKat. So that's, a, that's a, uh, another factor to consider when you're buying a tablet. The LG G-Pad 7.0. Uh, again, similar to the Asus, uh, very solid all around, but uh, did have a couple of cons. Uh, the cameras on it were really poor, and so again, for content creation, this visual content, it's 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 not going to be your choice. And it only has eight gigabytes of internal storage, which is limiting as well. Although you do have 
that micro SD card slot for storing additional media. Um, did have great battery life, great screen, and some great features there. Uh, if the cameras had been better and there had been a little bit more storage, this may have been my top pick. Uh, all told, uh, all five of these tablets have merit as mobile ministry tools. Uh, even the Uba Slate 7CI, which you saw my list of cons there, was pretty extensive. But in the right market for the right people, that, that is a great tool. It's a full feature tablet for about $37, which is pretty amazing. Overall, my top pick was the Lenovo A7. Uh, about $140 for that tablet, and it's just a really enjoyable tablet to use and good across the board. It doesn't have the best battery life, but six and a half hours of, of nonstop video playback with, with the screen setting on its highest setting, uh, highest brightness that entire time, and Wi-Fi turned on as well. That's still not bad. So that's a, a, a great overall pick. Uh, for best value, I picked the Hisense Zero 7 Pro. I mentioned it has a number of features that the other tablets don't have, and it packages into, into something that costs $85, which is pretty amazing. And, uh, and then an honorable mention to the LG G-Pad 7.0. That also was a really enjoyable tablet to use, uh, and uh, that made it uh, worthy of an honorable mention. So there you have it, comparative tablet review. These are great. We're going to see more and more of these being used around the globe, uh, and uh, just a great tool to have in our in our mobile ministry toolkits. Well, Brian, can you just jump in and go straight to Google Glass and then we'll do Q&A? Sure. Okay, well, uh, you may have noted from our from the mailing that went out from the mobile ministry forum that we are testing Google Glass. And uh, I've been privileged to be the first one trying these out. I've had them just just for um, almost not not quite 2 weeks yet. So I'm still uh, figuring figuring my way around Glass. It doesn't come with any kind of user guide, so you kind of pick it up as you go along. Um, but here's some first impressions, okay? Obviously, very uh, high geek factor, uh, but high cool factor. I mean, you, you uh, it's pretty cool wearing these things. And, and uh, first, we got to answer this question. Why Google Glass? Why are we looking at this? Doesn't this seem really off on the fringe out there? And I... And, uh, I love this quote, Wayne Gretzky, obviously one of the all-time great hockey greats. What made him great? I skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it's been. And uh, and that's really where we want to be looking. You know, we don't want the church always having to be five steps behind in terms of uh, technology. Technology is moving so fast, uh, we really need to be a bit more forward-looking. And so we wanted to start looking at Google Glass. And in doing so we realized this is really kind of a, it's a concept uh, gadget. Uh, and by that I mean uh, this is a concept car here. Obviously you're not seeing cars like this in production, but they are a great way of, of, uh, of putting concepts out there and, and, and kind of testing them a little bit and seeing what sticks. And that's what Google Glass is. It is a, it's a phenomenal tool. It is amazing what they've been able to pack into such a tiny package. It's got a little prism that, uh, with a display built in. And even with my, you know, I've got to wear reading glasses, but I have absolutely no problem uh, without using any kind of glasses seeing the little built-in display on Google Glass. Very clear display uh, and just a very seamless connection. It works using your mobile phone. Uh, and the and the the data service on your mobile phone it attach it, it connects to that via Bluetooth, so your mobile home, your mobile phone is is the hub for Google Glass and for a lot of other technology that's on its way uh, very rapidly. So this is really a concept device. It's not going to be something that I think we're going to see everybody wearing uh, one, two, five, ten years down the road. But it's coming. This type of of, of device is coming, and it's coming quickly. Uh, that's the speeding bullet here. Uh, the uh, Samsung just had their, their big launch a couple of weeks ago. The CEO of Samsung, his prediction from their studies, 212 billion, that's billion with a B, connected devices by 2020. So about five, six years from now, we're going to be seeing about over, that, that's an average of, uh, what, 30 or so internet connected devices per, for every person on the planet. And uh, your mobile phone's really going to be the hub for, for all of this. 
at least in, in the foreseeable future. Google Glass is 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 one of those examples, uh, and with that with that built-in display and uh, loca location aware services, it's it's just amazing where the world is going and going very quickly. Here's one of the apps that uh, I haven't had it had the chance to try out yet, but it, this is live, this is working. Uh, this is a real app, it's here right now. This is an app called uh, uh, Word Lens. And what you do, you look at a text, this I think is uh, Portuguese right here, and you simply look at it with, with Google Glass and immediately the translation in your default language, in this case English, shows up. So translate the world, that's the translation of traduzir o mundo. Forgive my, my weak attempt at Portuguese there. Okay, amazing that you can actually do this. Real-time translation of content. Now, there are some limitations right now, but the, the advances are happening so rapidly. This is coming down the pike really fast. Imagine being able to, you know, you're, not, uh, you're, not able, you're not fluent in a language, but you're able to take a look at, at some content and, and immediately in, in your glasses, your Google Glass, whatever the implementation is a couple years down the road, you're able to see a real-time translation of whatever, whatever it is that you're looking at. Very powerful uh, possibilities there. Here's another one that was it's kind of interesting. Google has a tool called Field Trip. You can get it on your mobile phone. This is an augmented reality app. You walk around, it recognizes based on your location, uh, nearby, uh, nearby services, nearby uh, landmarks, and immediately displays information. Of course, if you have Google Glass, you've got a built-in display sitting right there in front of your eyes, and it just pops up and says, hey, here we are. You're in, in this case, uh, Napa Valley State Park, and it starts giving you information about it. You can get more information by tapping on the side of your Google Glass, and it uh, pops up with more information. So, uh, you know, this is the type of stuff. We're going to be uh, this augmented reality move. Tony, Tommy Ahonen, mobile guru, uh, has already said that augmented reality is the eighth mass media in the world. Uh, it's coming quickly. Google Glass is a prime example of this. Uh, again, that combination of being location aware, hands free, you've got a display right there in front of your eyes, uh, and just being able to take in all of this added information about the world around us. You know, I could see something like this being used for prayer walks or um, boy, any, boy, a whole host of different things. So Google Glass, very cool device, very cool device. I don't think it's going to be what everybody's wearing in the next couple of years, but it is just a taste of what's coming down the pike very, very quickly. Wearable technology is where it's at. Mobile phone is, is definitely the hub for how this stuff operates, uh, but we're going to see more and more and more of, of this, these types of devices, and uh, we really do need to be thinking as a church, how are we going to tap into this so that we are ready to, to leverage it to make Jesus known to the nations. So uh, there you have it. Well, thank you very much, sir. I appreciate all of your time on that. And we are we have come to the end of our presentations, but we are going to open up for questions because I know that um, you probably all have some. We hope so. Um, before we do that, I know that Keith wanted to put an addendum to his um, his talk about something in particular. I think it was about Bible Box. So Keith, can you make your comment? Yeah, just noticing in the comment section uh, that uh, one of our more knowledgeable uh, participants, Jay from MAFLT, was sharing that you can actually uh, change the Bible Box homepage, the, the landing page that people see. So. Uh, yeah, just note that it is not actually a con for it. It is, uh, you're able to do it. It looked like you needed to have uh, a little bit of coding chops to do it, but uh, yeah, you can do that. So just want to make sure that was made apparent. Great, thank you. All right, well, we do have everyone muted. So Clyde, either you unmute everybody or there's the chat box if you're online and you can throw your questions in there and we will post them, reiterate them. Yeah, I probably won't unmute everybody because there's not bound to be backup noise. So just, yeah, yeah. cover your, put your cursor over the, the mic and or hold up your hand and I'll unmute you. There's a couple ways that we can do this. Antoine has said comment. 
I do not understand, Antoine. But he did mention that High Sense, uh, which is one of the one of the um, tablets that Brian was talking about, is available through Walmart in the U.S. and it can be purchased online. Antoine is raising his hand. Can you unmute him? Yeah, Antoine, you're unmuted. <laughs> okay. Can you guys all hear me good? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, I was just commenting um, as we as you guys were going through the different presentations. Um, it just reminded me of looking back at. Um, what I've done in Mobile Ministry Magazine and what uh, John's done in Cyber Missions and what Craig's done in Laredo, and there's a lot of stuff that uh, was dreamt about 5 and 10 and 12 years ago that uh, is just right, we're right there right now. It's really, really neat. Um, you know, it, it, it may seem for those who are just coming into Mobile Ministry that this is brand new, um, but it's not brand new as much as it's, it's finally able to happen. It's really exciting to see that. It is. And here's a question for Brad in the chat box, actually from David Hurtado. How do these tablets compare to the Samsung Galaxy Tab in terms of quality? To Brian, that is. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, David, yeah, good question. You know, I, I'm a Samsung user. I really like Samsung. Uh, you know, I think it's they, they vary. I, I didn't have these long enough to see how durable they're going to be. I'd say the Lenovo and the... Uh, 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 the Lenovo and the LG, I think, compare very, very well to the Samsung in terms of quality. Uh, the the high sense question mark there, but you're getting so much for such a small price. It's it's, a, it's certainly a compelling option. Um, so you know, I it's it, the 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 Samsung's still a great choice, and uh, we did not include that in in this review, but it's it's a very worthwhile choice as well. Um. Brian, I've got a question about the Google Glass. I know this may sound like a silly question, but if you do not have a Android device, can you use Google Glass since it is Android Google based? Uh, that is a good question, and I, I, you know, honestly, I don't know. I, I'm an Android user, so I have not. Uh, here, I'm actually going to put on my on my video, you might be able to see me. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm an Android user, so I don't. I don't know the answer to that, Benjamin. And okay. and someone someone else out there might might know. I'm guessing it is possible that there might be some apps developed for Apple devices to work with Google Glass. It does use Bluetooth uh, to connect with a phone, and that might be an issue with iPhones since they don't tend to play well with Bluetooth and other uh, uh, other types of mobile platforms. So, good question. One that we need to answer still. Great. Let me go to CBN. How about you, Scott? I'm unmuting you guys. Any Anybody want to shout out a question from your end? Uh, we had a comment on Google Glass working on iOS. Yeah, go. Can, um, I've had a chance to use them with an iPhone, so it was fun. Did you hear that, Brian? Heard, I heard it was able to use on iPhone. Said it I did, yeah. I'm getting yes. a bunch of stuff. Antoine is saying, and Darcy has said, and okay, so Antoine's the My Glass app is available for iOS. So yeah, and given given the given the huge market share that Apple has in the U.S., I think that makes sense. Yeah, it it does. Good. Let All me right. just say too, we just saw Apple release the the Apple Watch, not the iWatch, the Apple Watch. Just another example, we're going to see more and more of these types of wearable devices coming out, whether it's a glass type device or something on a wrist. Uh, this is just the, just the very, very tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. Okay. Um, Kirk installed installation of 25 Uber slates and a modified Bible box going to a remote school in Tunisia. Would love to give you an update on that in a couple of months. Yeah, for sure. Kirk Wilson is taking some Uber slates and the Bible box into Tunisia for some remote education stuff. So yeah, let's get a follow-up on that from Kirk in a few months, he says. And um, Clyde, you can you Elaborate. Oh, you know, that actually came 
from, oh, who was that? Uh, sorry, I'm copying in. This is from uh, Jeff Gregory. Jeff Gregory, can you comment on your comment? Uh, the Bible box landing page being configurable. I've unmuted you. Uh, yeah, I just um, purchased all the um, components off Amazon. And we've been playing around with it just this last week, actually, and um, was able to completely configure the um, landing page. So it looks you know, just like a regular web page uh, without any, any too much difficulty, just basic HTML knowledge. I uh, was able, even able to set up contact pages, you know, so afterwards I can download um, from the USB and uh, find out all the people who, cont who were visited the page and, um, you know, if they made any comments or click a button, you know, if they want to have more information, that kind of stuff. Um, so very, very uh, flexible. Um, there was a question here from Keith. Can you do right to left scripts on BibleBox's landing page? And Kurt uh, responded. Yeah, okay, go ahead, Kurt. Kirk? Seems to be muted. Kirk, I have unmuted you if you can comment. Okay, he did make a comment um, in the chat. The Bible box, um, they have done some translating to the Arabic and added other content, such as Khan Academy for Arabic. So that's cool. Um, Jay has physically modified the Wi-Fi router to include a Wi-Fi antenna for more range. Lightstream works really well with much smaller, far cheaper portable batteries. System files don't support Unicode, however, it can. It's native format. So Kirk has said that um, BibleBox landing page um, doesn't support the Unicode, but the native format seems to allow it. Hey Benjamin, we're running out of time. Can I jump to the drawing, yes. and, and then and then you can do the announcements. So here's how we're going to do our drawing. If you saw it, you're here you can be a free test driver of the Google Glass that we have. So we're offering two weeks, but here are our limits. We'll send it to you. You just have to, after two weeks, send it on to the next tester. Uh, so if you're willing to do that, and you're in the United States, I hate to be so limiting, and I don't know, Jeff, if you were in the United States, but if you were in the United States, you were a candidate, and here's how we're going to do it. Uh, most of you, it looks, um, uh, except for you maybe, Kirk, have um, – you're on the WebEx. So you should be able to, if you can find the chat box, and you can type in a number between 0 and 100, the number that is closest to our pre-selected number will be our winner. So you've got like 120 seconds to go into the chat box and type in a number between 0 and 100, and the closest to our pre-selected number will be our two-week winner, and you get to test drive it. So that being said, some numbers are coming in. And uh, we'll go ahead, Benjamin, and I'll wrap it up with the, the numbers at the end. OK, sounds really good. Uh, yeah, everybody, thank you so much for participating. We're glad that you made it. We um, are concluding our webinar series for 2014, but are hoping to do another one in the next uh, couple of, well, the next year for sure. And speaking of coming up, we do have the next um, what are we, Keith, I'm, or Clyde, I'm drawing a blank uh, this here. This is our six-week class, our yes. online course. That's right. The six-week class that is put on by Cyber Missions and John Edmiston is happening on October 7th. It's when the next six-week course starts, so October 7th. And you can go to um, Cyber Missions. I just put a link in here. Yeah, okay. uh, the, 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 here's a link, yeah. Yeah, that, so it's mobmin.com org slash course. I think that's it. Let me double check I think that. We, well. While he's checking that, we do have a story seminar on November 13th. And Clyde actually will tell us a little bit more about that. But then our consultation, the MMF consultation, which we are not having this year, we're going to postpone it and have it in conjunction with the EMDC in April. So next year, April 17th and 18th, 2015 in Zelm, Holland, is where the MMF will be, April 17th and 18th. 
and uh, it's going to be right after the EMDC, which will be the 13th through the 16th. So if you can make it to Holland, it's a great couple of events, two days for MMF on the 17th and 18th after the four days in um, with EMDC. So yeah, the Mobmen course is uh, mobmen.org slash course. So um, we... So far, we do have a close number. Well, um, hang on, because not all of them are visible. Ahead. Some of them went to me, actually, because okay. there's an all option right. to have it sent to everybody and, and just sent it to, to me. Okay, um, well, then we'll let you a, make a final call. But here tell it is. Us about I'll, the, I'll uh, do the story, story thing for 20 team. seconds. Yeah, we're doing a one-day seminar. This is a visual story network thing, I should say, uh, here in Los Angeles um, on Thursday, November 13th. Uh, you can read more about it at that link, and it's basically to help ministry organizations better understand how to integrate story across their culture. How do they reach people? How do they teach people? How do you lead people? And that's all I'll say about that. So, we're, you know, you're welcome to go there. So I'm going to read the numbers that I have here. Some are public, some are not. So I have Kirk Wilson with a 57, David Hurtado with 7, Jeff Gregory with 67, Antoine 15. Lauren with three, Jessica 66, David Hurtado 7, Polay 70, or Paulette, excuse me, uh, CBN, oh shoot, wait a minute, where'd it go? It's jumping around. CBN was 37, Bill Dick was 37, Jay was 42, Jay, you know what, Jay, you're going to get it eventually because you're on our little team, so you're, you're disqualified, Jay, so... Uh, uh, so, uh, so Jay's uh, 42. So we've got a draw. Well, okay, so is that the case? So the secret number was 47. So that means it looks, is 37 the closest? Well, there's a 57 and a 37, so they're both 10. Oh, off. so we have a three-way tie. So here's what we're going to have to do. So CB, I'm going to pick a number, and I'm going to, I'm here, I'm going to go full screen here. Oh uh, no! I can't do that. So we got CBN, Bill, and Bill Dick, and then who was the fifty-seven? And Kurt. Kurt okay, so I'm going to have to just do this. Okay, I've got a number in my head from one to ten, and I'm going to say uh, I, I'm just—it's in my head. So I'm going to say uh, CBN. Scott, give me your number between uh, between one and ten. Come on, help me. I need some input. I, I think I heard twelve numbers. Scott, give me one. You should go with her. Uh, nine. Nine. Okay, Scott says nine. And then, Kirk, are you there? Can you shout out a number? Three. Or, okay, three is Kirk. And then who was the other 37? I can't remember. That was Paulette. Was it Paulette? Uh, Bill. Bill, Bill, Bill. Okay, Bill, number. So we have two and nine. I'm sorry, we had three. What do we have? I'm sorry, I'm confused. Three and nine. <laughs> So, so, Bill, Bill, what's your number? Five. <laughs> okay, Bill I five. picked two. All right, Kirk got it. So, Kirk was three. So, Kirk, you are <laughs> the winner of our first ever and perhaps only Google Glass free two-week test drive. Kirk, we'll get your information, and uh, we'll just add, in a couple of weeks, we'll probably get that to you, and you get to test drive it for a couple of weeks. Wrap us up, Benjamin, or pray us out. <laughs> If you're able. Oh, Brendan, you're fr you got, Benjamin's screen is frozen, so I'm going to pray us out. Lord, thanks for these people this time. We bless you and worship you in Jesus' name. We'll send out a follow-up link to each of you with the recorded uh, webinar as well as the notes so you can review it later, pass it along to your friends. There you go. Anything else, Benjamin? That's it. Everyone have a great day. All righty. God bless. Thanks, you all. Any questions about mobile ministry forum or um, Chris is going, yeah. 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 Ye